You've probably heard somebody say you are what you eat, but have you ever heard somebody say you are where you eat? So chew on that for a second. I'm Charles Post coming to you live from the Arctic. I'm HipCamp's resident ecologist, and today we're gonna to be digging into some surprising facts about our world as you don't know it yet. Is that good? So have you ever wondered how scientists reconstruct the diet of ancient civilizations, like the Greeks, the Romans, or the ancient Aztecs? There's a bunch of tools that scientists have in their toolbox, but one in particular called stable isotopes analysis allows scientists to look into a hair sample or a bone sample or a tooth sample and by looking at the composition of molecules in those samples, nitrogen and carbon, scientists are able to start to piece together these diets, which tells us a lot about where their food comes from. Was it local? What was the climate like? And with these different threads, they can start to weave together a story of what life must have been like thousands of years ago. And so what does this mean for you and me? What it means is that it's true, you are what you eat. The food we eat, the diets we have, slowly assimilate into our bodies, into our teeth, into our hair, into our skin, into our blood, right? Food nourishes us and tracers of those foods, molecular signatures from those foods become embedded into our body. And so the you are what you eat statement is in fact true, but I wanna take it a step further. You are where you eat. And so if you think about it, this idea of you are where you eat, it's true. The foods that you have in your diet, assuming they're local, they are being assimilated into your physiology. But let's take this a step further. Every day, 1% of your cells are being regenerated. All cells, as you know, wear out and die. In order for this body to continue functioning, much less to grow, it must have new cells. Every 100 days, 100% 100 of your cells are being regenerated. And as those cells are being regenerated, they are being influenced by not only diet, but also the environment, the places that we live, the places we spend time. So if we take these little threads and put them together, it becomes really clear that the environment shapes us in profound ways. And that it's not just you are what you eat, but you are where you eat. These places become us and we become these places. So on your next hip camp adventure, think about visiting a place that you'd like to be part of and that you would like to have as part of you. And so I know that's maybe a tall order that makes things feel a little bit more intense, maybe a little bit more uh, serious, but think about your favorite place. Would you love to have Yosemite woven into your physiology or Moab? I mean, to me, that's just super exciting. So next time you plan your hip camp adventure, think about that.